Hello everybody, my name is Cambria and welcome to my channel. On this channel I do book reviews, I do poetry, I vlog, I do challenges, I kind of just do a little bit of everything. Um, so you should definitely check out my other videos and subscribe. So tomorrow I have a book event with my school that I go to. I'm a freshman in college and they are putting on this uh, sort of small casual event for my book imaginary friends if you are new to this channel and you did not know i published a book back in july it's called imaginary friends it is a ya fantasy that discusses foster care and mental illness but yeah they're putting on this super cool event for me which is super awesome and i'm really excited about so i wanted to film it i don't really know what to expect i know there's a little q a session and i'm reading part of the book i'm gonna be selling copies there and they're doing like a gift card drawing i keep saying i hate talking in front of people but i know it's literally just gonna be my friends there so i'm not too worried about it and i think it's cool that i get opportunities like this just because i wrote a book and i don't even feel like i wrote a book but anyways i'm gonna stop talking and i will see you tomorrow Tomorrow. Hi. <laughs> good luck. You're doing so good. <laughs> this is the vlog. Say hello. Yes. Yes. We're gonna be famous. Yes, really <laughs> famous. My 108 subscribers yes. really love y'all. Okay, so take this and go explain what's over there. You come explain. Um, I'm gonna record. Do you, wow. you want any words before you go? No. Okay. <laughs> you come explain it. What am I doing? You're explaining what's over. I didn't put you on the cookies and popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> on the little buttons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I little button. you want me to record you putting one on? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, and look, she was giving away. Ooh, look at Cassie getting a button. Right oh, that one's fancy. Oh, right there. She's, she's legit. How do you say her name? Uh, not the way Bruce McCarty said it <laughs> this morning. Can't That's how you don't. I said Camp Tognassi. Can't tell me yet. I said no. <laughs> Are we smiling? It's a video. I got a firm I go <laughs> Good I YouTube. Got this is my ticket for the drawing. That in focus. Yeah, actually it's auto focus. I never have to do that. <laughs> like it's things a work right now. Or a burrito day gift card or a Starbucks gift card. Very nice. And buttons. Who's going to be the lucky winner? <laughs> it's me. Um, I got it. I wish I could say I got some cool. I got it off Amazon. See if Avery uh, noticed. Is it like a just? She's had an interesting night. Bella. <laughs> so how did you get the idea for your book? That was a very long process to get this idea. Um, I technically started playing with ideas at the end of like sixth grade, going into seventh grade. I always loved writing, so I just played with ideas all the time, different characters. I loved making up my own characters, and then. Going in to ninth grade, I became really passionate about foster care kids, abused kids, and that's kind of where my passion lies. Um, so I wanted to take my passion for writing and social work together, and that is where I got the idea, and then it mainly started with my characters and built up from there. Awesome. So tell us what the process of writing your book was like. The process is very long for writing, so if you want to write a book, just know it's going to be a very long process and you might want to give up at some times. But, so it first started with playing with ideas and I would write random passages just randomly. A lot of it are on my phone and still on my phone today. Um, it started just with little random scenes in here that I just ended up piecing together. Um, I never had a strict outline for my book. I just had about three plot points I knew I needed to get there and kind of let my imagination go wild from there. And then after I finished writing, that was about January of last year. Um, and then I ended up getting an editor. She was a freelance editor, so um, there's three rounds of editing, which I'm not, I won't get into because it's kind of boring. But um, you go through three rounds of editing, there's line by line editing, there's structural editing, and then after that, um, it's kind of all put together and you do the, the little fun things like the cover and all that stuff. So my main character, Elle Carraway, she was abused all growing up. Her mother died when she was young um, and she was abused by her father. And, um, 
when her father died, she got moved to the foster care system. So this is where chapter one kind of picks up. Several weeks passed with no return of the mysterious boy. Elle had come to the conclusion that perhaps she was going mad, that the boy she saw was non-existent. She was afraid to ask anyone if they knew of the boy from the trees. She didn't want Mrs. Everson thinking she was any more insane than she already was, that Elle now had imaginary friends roaming her mind. She forced her mind to believe the boy from the trees was simply her vivid imagination. She decided on this until one exceptionally windy night when she was about to climb into bed at last. Just as Elle reached to turn off her bedside lamp, an odd knock thumped on her window. Her initial thought was that it was a tree hitting the window from the wind, then soon remembered there was not a tree by her bedroom window. Instantly, Elle thought of the mysterious boy. Very, very slowly she turned her head to the window, and even slower opened one eye and then the other. As much as she tried to prepare for this moment, she was still startled to see the boy from the trees effortlessly crouched on the window sill outside, balanced comfortly on his tiptoes while his knees slid up against the glass. The boy fell into Elle's room without a sound. He stood up and stared at her. My name is Eric Redwinder. I'm not from here. I'm from a series of villages called Remedium. In the villages of Remedium live people called mystics. I, for example, am a mystic, so don't worry, you aren't entirely crazy. I'm a real life person, just not exactly. What mystics do is we find normal people as yourself who have been indwelled by charmers. A charmer is a type of person, more like creature, that feeds off, off of traumatic experiences, terrifying memories, and so on and so forth. Are you following? I'll stare at Eric. Eric. So you think that I have a charm in me? Charmer with a er, yes. When you watch your father die, you weren't quite indwelled yet. We don't think, but we think you are being watched. And so we kept an eye on you. By we, I mean us mystics. But once you came here to this foster home, tell me, what did you develop? Elle slumped her shoulders, though she knew exactly what Eric was thinking. Anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress, etc. Eric answered for her. So that's when we knew a charmer attacked you. Because whenever someone has a charmer in them, they begin to develop side effects like yours. Does that make sense? Yes, you have a charmer in you, but it's okay. It's a quick removal. Removal? Like, what do you mean? Some kind of exorcism? All queried. Mm, basically, Eric said casually, but you'll be okay, I promise. What if I don't want the charmer removed? Then that would be done because you'd end up killing yourself. Killing myself? Yeah, killing yourself. That's what usually happens to people who are indwelled or who don't want to be separated from their charmer. Well, why wouldn't people want their charmer removed when you tell them that? Elle asked. For the most part, some people don't believe it. I think people just get attached to their insanity. Their insanity becomes their reality and anything genuinely normal seems insane to them. I think sometimes, a lot of the time, people feel like the feeling of being insane. So what do you say? Eric beamed as he stood up from the desk chair. To what exactly? You know, getting actual help. Getting that charmer out of you and actually living again. I think I wouldn't mind living again, Elle said, surprising herself with the words. And that is chapter one. Whenever you were writing the book, did you ever hit writer's block? And if so, like, how did you overcome that? Well, I took about three years to write the book, so writer's block was a definite problem because I didn't plan out the book entirely. I really wanted my imagination to flow. And the whole time I couldn't think of an idea or a good enough idea that I really liked. It was more, I knew good things took time and I didn't want to rush the writing process because if I rushed it and I didn't like it at the end then I would just be upset. Um, I wanted, I'm very much a perfectionist and I wanted it to be something I was like truly proud of. Um, but another thing with writer's block, it's like, I heard just like keep your pencil on the paper. Like even if you're writing like LOL or like writing whatever song lyrics, anything, like just keep your pen on the paper and it will start writing and I think that's true. So was there any part of the book that you really wanted to include but left out? My final manuscript, when I finished it, in January of last year, it was 170,000 words or something like, 117,000 words, something like that, something with a seven and a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Like, it was a lot, and if you don't know, that's like a 600 page book, like, that's a really long book. 
Um, so there was a lot of backstory with Alicia. I think the like most important thing to me was my characters and like really developing them, and, like getting to know them and being like super close with them. Um, so there was a whole bunch of backstory, and so when I gave that to my editor, and she was like, "This is not going to work. Like this is way too much writing." Um, people like she was just blunt with me, and it was kind of hard to hear at first. Like she was like, "People are not going to be interested in all this backstory," and I was like why like that's the best part and I love that and I still have it um but after knowing the finished product I'm like she was very right that was a lot and nobody would care about all those details unless they were social work majors but yeah I guess it was hard but I it wasn't too hard because I knew she was the expert and she knew what she was talking about so I trusted her so if you could share one life lesson from writing a novel what would you say I know it's cheesy but like you really can do whatever you put your mind towards. I think ambition is such an important thing and such an attractive thing. Like ambition is so, so important. Also just like finding your passion and mixing that with ambition is just so important. And um, it's cheesy, but it's true. You can literally just do whatever you want to do um, if you just keep going with it and not actually getting up with it. How do you actually feel to see your book in person? It's very surreal and very weird. It's actually scary that people read it. I don't like looking at people when they read my book. But it's it's really cool and it's like such a big goal. I remember when I got the first copy sent to my door, I was so nervous. I was shaking so hard and my stomach hurt so bad and I was like looking on my phone looking at like if the package had arrived yet. I was so scared and just like holding it for the first time like it felt like I gave birth. Like it felt like I had a <laughs> child. Like it was just so surreal. I saw this on a computer screen mm -hmm. for like four years so it's weird that it's Paper. So, do you have any other books in mind or any other projects coming up? Um, with Imaginary Friends, like this is where the story ends, and I left it off in a very peculiar way, so I'd like to know your theories. But I've had my next idea for my book series since I was 16, since I was a sophomore in high school. So I've had that idea for a really long time, and that's that's gonna be a long time away before I ever hold that book, but probably my next book will probably be a poetry book. I would love to start that um, maybe this summer, maybe have it published by next year or something. I'll always write. My number one goal is to be a full-time author. I would love that so much, so yeah, I'll always be a writer. Awesome. Okay, so do you guys have any questions as the audience? Yes? Would you be able to talk a little bit more about the publishing Process. Yeah, so that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. Um, so after it was fully edited, I had an okay experience publishing. I self-published, if y'all didn't know. So I didn't go in a publishing company or anything. That would have taken 4,000 years. I just did not have the patience for that since I took so long to write it. Um, so my editor actually um, abandoned me. So I had to edit it, the rest of it, which was annoying. But so that took a little longer, and then I self-published on this website called Creative or Creative Space or something like that. Creative Space. Um, it's now something else, and it's Kindle Direct Publishing. They just like combine it together. So that was a pretty easy process. You just upload the full manuscript, um, and you upload the cover and everything. And then it kind of makes it for you. I could go into like a lot of advice with ISBN numbers. Like y'all don't even like, know about that. Like ISBN numbers cost money, and it costs a lot of money, and um, and so do barcodes. But it's not that hard if you want to do self-publishing. It's very easy to Google. There's just a. I just personally don't recommend self-publishing. Just like go ahead and do traditional publishing. It's going to take a lot longer, but it might be worth it. So, you wrote about like kids in foster care and like how they feel and um, kind of their emotions. How much research did you do into that as a whole? Yeah, because I have no experience with foster care. Um, I'm fortunate enough that I've never had to go through that. Um, and I guess a lot of my research was more dealing with those kids that had harder families, maybe not necessarily foster kids, but kids that had really tough family lives. 
I worked on an after school daycare. Um, I was a nanny and then I was in a leadership program where I got to work one-on-one uh, -on -one with kids, um, K through ninth graders. And just those experiences, like, oh, I can talk about it all day. Like, it really grew my passion for kids that are in such unfortunate circumstances. And um, but I think it's important to know only because you didn't experience uh, what, like, only because you didn't experience it doesn't mean you can't have empathy towards it. It's just about love and loving those kids. They don't always send someone to, like, fully understand their situation. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I guess a lot of hands-on. And then just like, um, with statistics, it would just be finding good sources online, um, you know, not sketchy Google websites or anything mm -hmm. like that, but yeah. So you talk a lot about um, like getting to know your characters and like that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And um, so like, if you were to give like one of your favorite qualities about the main character, what would it be? Ooh. Oh, I don't even know. I guess with, like, her natural strength. Mm. She, you know, she was abused. She watched her father die. She watched her mother die. Like, she had a very traumatic life. And she just had a natural strength. Even though she went through so much, like, depression, anxiety, PTSD. It was, like, her strength was, like, it was obvious. So, mm. I just thought. Okay, hey, guys. It is the next. It's actually, like three days since the event. Uh, sorry for this glare and bad angle. I just don't care. Yeah, the event went really well. It was a lot of fun. I haven't looked at the video or edited it yet of the event, but I feel like the angle is really bad and the sound is probably really bad, so I apologize for that. But I hope you enjoyed this video. The event was just super fun and I want to do more things like that in the future. I don't know if I ever talked about how back in October I got to talk to a fourth grade class about imaginary friend or fifth grade. I think they're a fifth grade uh, class about imaginary friends and it was just like the best thing and I think my favorite thing about these events is the conversations after and just hearing people's stories and what they took from my message it's like my favorite thing and I'm so appreciative that I get these opportunities and that imaginary friends has continued to grow since it came out in August if you want a copy or are interested in knowing more about the book I'll link where you can buy it down below and read the blurb also I made a video talking all about imaginary friends so I'll link that video down below too thank you so much for watching and thank you um, if you have bought Imaginary Friends and have read it and enjoyed it, thank you so much for that support. Definitely subscribe if you want to see more videos and I will see you in my next video.